Um, can you hear me? All back in the back? Yes. Okay. <coughs> I don't want to shout a lot because I have lots of classes to go. Um, need to save a bit of my voice. Are we still expecting? What happened to your friend? Um, distribute this, please. Um. If you have friends that you like, if you have friends that you adore so much, you can be in the same group. Okay. Why there are only two of you? People do not like you? I think I have to sit here because I can sit here. Yeah. Do, do you have class after this? Yeah. What time? Two. Two, okay. Is it at the campus? Your class? Where, where is your class? Is it at the campus? Okay. Kenapa kosong ni? Why? Um, I think. Do we do we have extra? You you can have mine, but this is not complete. Um, is everyone having this manual? Anybody not having it? All good? Okay. <sighs> okay, good morning. All good? Okay. Um, so, is this your first time to this faculty? Yes. Yeah. No. no. So far away, right? Yeah. yeah. How long does it take for you to get here from your college? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? That's quicker than me. 10 minutes. Okay. Um, before we go to our um, first week activity, um, there is, there's a couple of things that I need to clarify first because you didn't have your first lecture, right? which usually is something that we do um, on, on the first class, okay? All right, so a few things first. Um, I hope you are in the right class. What class is this? Botany. Are you sure botany? Agriculture botany. There is a specific word attached to it, agriculture botany. No idea why they put it that way. Botany is just botany. So botany is actually the... Um, Plant science, okay? In the past, botany is actually encompassing all the disciplines in plant science. So it can be plant anatomy, plant morphology, 
um, even the uh, plant cultivation, agronomy, so many things. Okay, it's from the Greek word um, botanikos and logos. Logos is the study of botanikos is the, the study the study of plant. Okay, but for the sake of learning, the botany that you're going to deal with for the rest of the semester, you're not going to be able to learn every single discipline in plant science. So the botany, the agriculture botany that we're dealing with is actually only a few disciplines in plant science, namely plant morphology, plant anatomy, and also some amount of ethnobotany. Ethnobotany, do you know ethnobotany? Have you heard of that? <coughs> Fair warning. This class, you're going to learn a lot of new words because botany goes with a lot of Latin and Greek. So it, it wouldn't hurt if you have a little dictionary um, to write down, to jot down as you go along. And also, a fair warning, I have not taught botany for like over three years now. They made me teach again because of you. Why? 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 So it doesn't hurt to have something small like this when you learn a new word. Doesn't matter. Maybe in new English terminologies, botanical words, Latin words, Greek words, have it in your small books, okay? This is your opportunity to learn, I do not know, maybe it's your third or fourth language, okay? So, is it really memorizing? At first, yes, it's a lot of memorizing, but when it comes to the lecture and stuff, you will see that pretty much things you need comprehension and understanding, okay? So, I was talking about the ethnobotany. Oops. So ethnobotany is actually, well, two words. So this is the ethnic culture. It is the study of how the plants are being used locally, depending on the ethnic or culture of that particular place. Okay? So this is somewhat partially scientific. Okay? Sometimes, you, if, you, if you know, uh, regardless of the culture or race, some race or custom, they believe certain plants are beneficial for some purpose. For example, give me one example. Like that. What, what plant is this? So in, in India, this thing, in here, how do we regard this plant? Does it have any values, any properties that we can exploit? Can we turn it into snack? Can? Okay. Well, if we go to, to Lotus now, do you see any hibiscus snack? What about medicine? If you go to Watson, do you see any hibiscus capsule? Yes or no? Maybe in some um, small niche of pharmaceutical um, industry, but actually, in, in starting from I think India, people use this as a hair conditioner. Okay, because I will destroy one flower. This thing. If you take this flower and then you rub it is going to produce like a slimy gel. Where do you put it? In your hair. It's a hair conditioner. So, but usually for this purpose, people do not use the red hibiscus. For this purpose, white hibiscus. Okay? And this has been known for thousands of years. 2,000 years of go ago, is there any scientific lab to know the properties of this? So it is the wisdom that has been passed down from generation to generation, and people just know about it. That is ethnobotany.
and it is applicable to all plants in the planted kingdom. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so now that you have somewhat understood what botany is all about, so let's talk about the things that you're going to go through for the rest of the semester. Number one, um, I'm not going to teach you for the entire semester. This is split into two. Okay, so I will be responsible for your class until the mid semester break. Okay, and half of it, uh, Prof. Umarani will um, take over. Okay. All right. Um, well, I actually um, that 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 is a happy news for her because the first part is actually the 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 the, the harder part. Yeah, because I need to teach you the fundamentals of things, okay? The, towards the end, it's more about the appreciation of the subject, okay? All right, not to, not, not to say that um, there is anything less of importance, but that's how things are, okay? All right, so you have your lectures and you have your um, uh, practical, so for your lectures, um, you can check your Skype, okay? I've just sent it to, to your Skype. So basically, these are the things. Um, this is in Malay. I do not know why, but that's, that's what they give me. You're going to see about the uh, botanical concept. So these are the lessons, okay? So in total, there are um, 10 lessons, I think. 10 lessons that you need to learn throughout semester during the lecture time. And this includes the um, fundamental of botany, the taxonomy of the plants, uh, morphology of the vegetative parts, including the roots, stem, uh, leaves, and also the microstructure. And then you're going to learn about the reproductive structure. You might think that, oh, this looks pretty much like human biology. Yes, that is a living thing as well. Plant is a living thing as well. So you will see that some parts of plants are actually equivalent to human parts, okay? Which is good. You can better appreciate um, the things that you learn and you can memorize better, right? Okay, and my part will be up to this point, lesson number five. So finally, you're going to learn about the plant reproduction uh, with me. Okay, and from this uh, lesson forward about the anatomy, the ecology, and, and all this uh, principle of the conservation and preservation, all the way until botany, that will be with Prof. Umarani. Okay, uh, nothing wrong with different lecturers, okay? In fact, Umarani was my lecturer a long, long time ago. When was it? 20 years ago? Yeah, she's ancient. Don't tell her. All right. Okay. So that's for your uh, lecture. For your um, what's this? Um, practical. Um, so these are the things that the our lab assistant will give to you from week to week. Okay. And you can see that um, sometimes there are things. You need to be present here. And towards the end, something more like of activity or case um, study. All right? Okay. So for the first half of the semester, pretty much you need to draw a lot, like serious drawing. Anybody do not like arts here? Oh, everybody like arts. What happens if you do not like it, but you have to do it now? So I was, I was made to understand that you're going to be um, a teacher. Is that true? Or, or are you going to be something else? You're not first year, right? Graduating soon? Cannot wait for it that to happen soon? So what, what actually do you learn? You know what, in, in our faculty, 
agriculture botany is the first thing, first semester, first year lesson. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought you were first year because I like to deal with the first year. You know, smaller, do not know anything. Whatever I say, they will just believe. Yeah. When you are older, uh, not cute anymore. I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dosa dah banyak. Right. Right. Look at the first year. Nice, nice. Just clueless. You don't know where to go. Right. Yeah. My advice is, um, since you're going to be, I don't want to say teacher, I want to say educator, take the most while learning this. Okay? Because you're going to see that what it's going to look different and to feel different what, from what you are used to all this one. Okay? You, at the end of the course, you must be able to be on par, cannot be less than what the lecturers have given you. Okay? Let's face it. We are not going to be able to provide everything for you, for you to learn everything in one semester. It's just not possible. However, we can tell you so that you have the awareness about the subject and you know how to be resourceful, resourceful okay, to look for the information so that when you are on your own, even though without um, supervisor, without lecturer, you can find information by yourself. And that is far more useful, all right? Okay, all right. So that's pretty much about it. All right, let's see what is going to happen after this. Um, everybody got this manual? Anybody not having it? You don't? You have this? I got one extra here. How many of you? Can somebody check in the SMP? How many of you? 54. Who? You got it. So, what are you talking about? Can you please not torture your lecturer? See, this is why I like first year. First year will not do that to me. You know, you are older, you are heavier, malas nak bangun. And then, you can the lecturer to jalan jalan so long. Okay, all right. Um, not to worry. I will. I'll give you this uh, um, soft copy of this. Okay, all right. I'm not going to touch this just yet. Let's go to this um, plant illustration first. So in botany, you know, many <laughs> many plant scientists actually looking down at botany this plant taxonomy, plant anatomy thing. Because it's all about appreciation and you just know that plant, what is the name of it? This structure, what is it called? This forms, how is it related to the rest of the plant? Pretty much that, okay? But I think differently. This is the fundamentals of the rest of the science, for the plant science. If you don't understand the structure or the formation of the plant, how are we going to understand the plants of different species? How many species of plants are on this planet? Who knows? How many? Species. How many? Have a guess. How many? Got? How many? Those are the empuk dia. Atas ni kau. Berapa? How many? How many plant species do you know? When I say species, do you understand? Or do you not understand? Species? Do you, not, do, you don't understand what, what is meant by species? Okay, looks like you're blurred about that. Okay, let's 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 come back. This is this is going to be very fundamental. This is why we learn it in the first year. Okay. 
there are many kind of organisms on this planet. Okay, so many different types. So to prevent confusion and also to make easier reference for the people to talk about scientists, actually not really scientists at first, the people in the past, you know, smart people in the past, they categorize living things into groups of similar characteristics. Okay, it starts with as simple as living, non-living. Okay, hibiscus, living, non-living. Paper. As simple as that. Okay, but as the time progressed and people do further exploration, go to the forest, go to jungle, sea and so on, and then see new people in the deep mountain, people start finding various organisms. When I say organism, they're not just plants, okay? Insects, animals, ghosts. We have classification of ghosts, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any favorite? Okay, so people have this tendency to classify things of the similar properties. The things that are alike grouped together. Okay, so for the living things, and this is true for both um, plants, animals, and insects. I think you um, you learn this in school. No, I, I, do, I, I want to write this in Malay, but, but I do not know in Malay. Um, What's the formula? What? See, my student now. <coughs> okay. There is a mnemonic for this. You know the mnemonic? Mnemonic memorization technique. Some of your friends, you know, not. Anybody not know mnemonic? So there is a formula for this, okay? King, David, came over for great soup. K is kingdom, division. Um, for plant, we call division. For animals, we call phylum. Class, order, family, genus, species. So, we now, botany, are dealing with what kingdom? Plante. And how many? About 400 thousand species there's so many of plants okay so coming back to my earlier point why i think this is just important as other plant discipline if you, you do not understand how to describe the plants what is the structure of the plants you are not going to be able to utilize these four hundred thousand plants which i'm not saying that in your lifetime you're going to be able to see all these plants but at least you know the structures exist in some plant so that you are not surprised when you see a completely new plant. Okay, and guess what? These structures can be of useful depending on your future interest. You know, some people like to turn it into medicine. Some people like to turn it into uh, products and so on. So when you see products, pharmaceutical products in the pharmacy, you see products in the... Uh, cosmetic, this thing people turn into shampoo. You can look it up. There is a hibiscus shampoo. Hibiscus shampoo, hibiscus tree. Hibis hibiscus pills, I'm not sure. Each of these products utilizing specific parts of the plants. If you get the parts wrong, you're not going to get in any effects because the active compounds only present in certain parts. So that's why we learn botany. Okay, you know the parts, you know the magic is inside this part so that you can create your own formulation for whatever products that you are interested with. Maybe interested with shampoo, 
you know, you can turn this into cookies. Hibiscus. I have not seen any nation turn flowers so much into salad. You know salad? Ulam. Ulam to salad. Nah. Hawaiian people eat a lot of flowers for some reason. They eat this. They eat orchids. Yeah. If you want to try, because I do this with my friends when, when I was like very, very young kid. This thing actually tastes good. If you, you take this flower, this red hibiscus, dip it in Coke and eat it. <laughs> yeah, that's our snack uh, for some reason during, during school time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm, that's why I turn this way. Eat a lot of weird stuff. It, it doesn't taste as good if you dip in. You know, there are other carbonated drinks like Sprite. Um, what was that yellow thing? Kickapoo. You know, you know Kickapoo? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Don't try if you are too afraid to try things. Okay. All right. So that's why we need to learn how to appreciate the plants as a whole and also their specific organs. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you this actually during the lecture time, but I will give you like a pre-introduction to it, all right? So bear in mind, plants have organs. Do you have organs? Yes. So what, what are organs actually? Organs are reproductive. What are organs? Organs actually pretty much towards very complex towards the end. You start with many, many cells. You make what? Tissue, similar tissue come together, they become organ. Organ comes together, they become the system. System, you put all system together, become organism. Okay, get it? Yeah. So for plant morphology, morphology means it's two words. Um, morpho and logos. Morpho means form. Shape. Morphology. Morph. This Greek, Greek, Greek word, okay? Greek and Latin word. Shape or form. Log logos actually actually means the, the study of. So when you put together morphology, the study of shape or forms. All right? And for this plant morphology, we are dealing at this level. Okay? Can we study this cells and tissue now? Today, can we study this cells and tissue? Why? This is small, you need microscope. Can you study system and organ? Actually, um, this is still not possible. It's possible to some degree, but not entirely. You need a special equipment to do this. So for your visual naked eyes and your senses, this is what we can deal with. Let's be external organ, okay? All right, okay. So let's look at how do you want to deal with your drawing. Um, we have this plant here. <clears throat> here. Ooh, basa. Do you know the Latin name for this? That plant. Do you know the Latin name of it? When I say Latin name, there are three ways of saying this thing, but they are all meaning the same thing. Scientific name, 
botanical names, Latin names, they all mean the same. Okay? What are the same? Okay. So you will have your paper. I hope you'll bring your paper. Please don't use test pad. Okay. Um, please use clear paper. <clears throat> so you have your um, paper like this. <coughs> Depending on the lesson that you are dealing with on a certain week. I'm just telling this on the overview, generally, how the drawing format should look like. Okay, but it still depends on the weekly activity. Some week you are dealing with fruit organ. Some week you are dealing with the flower organ. So for each of these, there is a slightly more specific way to do it. But on general, we go by the, not really the plant level, um, the, how do I say this? Branch level, this one. Usually guys do not like this kind of stuff. Why am I holding this? <clears throat> I know some of you do not like drawing, like really, really don't like it because when you try to draw flower, it looks like queer. But this is the magic of uh, science, okay? To be a good scientist, even though you're going to be a teacher, educator, when you are a good scientist, you are actually being forced to be skillful in different fields, okay? When you naturally are not good with drawing, but you are kind of forcing yourself to do drawing, that actually activate certain part of your brain that has been asleep for so long. Okay, you know some people, they're very good at drawing because the parts of the brain, the brain cells that making them so good at drawing already awaken, no problem at all. Okay, so when you have to deal with this kind of thing, which is super hard, but you manage to do it somehow, drawing, playing musical instruments are the known activities to increase IQ, okay? That's why um, some Renaissance men in the history, do you know Renaissance men? Renaissance? Renaissance men is, you know, um, academic or philosoph philosophy figures in the past. For example, like, um, what's the, the name of that guy uh, that creates, um, oh, I forgot the name. Mm, da Vinci. Not only that he's good with medical things, he's also good with the poetry, he's good with the, this anatomy thing, he's good with so many things, science, arts, literature. So when you are good with so many things, maybe more than 10, you are called a Renaissance man, right? Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that you must be a Renaissance man, but this is a step to go towards it. Okay, you're so good with it. So when you have a plan like this, is, is it all about drawing? Drawing and labeling, okay? So you need to have your plants somewhere here. Oh, it seems not. I need to change my marker. One moment. I should have brought my red marker. You know, all my life teaching, I always, lose my red marker for some reason. Why, oh, yeah. So, you have your plants. Oh, 
Oh, that's too big. So, something like that. My drawing is not that great, okay? But, at least I try. So, you will have your leaf. So, hold the, the plants in your hands and try to draw as much detail as you can, okay? I'll give you one example um, to... Where's my phone? Mm, oh, okay. Too bad, this is not a drawing class. I'll give you some example how... Okay, how do you unfold this? Okay, so this is one example. Okay, and this is only one plan. Okay, not only you draw it, but come on, I got this from, from the net. Okay, you need to be able to label the parts. For now, you have not learned the actual names of the structure. Okay, so after you have drawn the picture of the plant, so you can use reference like this, to start labeling. There are many weird words now. Remember, this is not English words. Okay, so start labeling. Okay, so for this particular image, actually this image is a very good image. Almost good, 98% good for a botanical drawing. It has got, number one, the whole look of the plant comprising the main organs. You got the stem, you got the leaf, and then you got the flower. Okay? Yeah. And then, right next to it, it takes a cross section of the flower. So you can take this flower, and then you can open it. How do you open this? Okay. For hibiscus, it is better for you to hold two petals, and then you tear it down while holding the three petals at the back, so that you can expose the ovary inside, the genosium. Genosium is the female flower parts, okay? So that you can have something like this, okay? Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about this ovary thing. We're not going to deal with that, yeah. So for each of these flower parts inside, this thing here, after you're done with that, you can see the, the progression of it. This is the whole thing. This is just focusing on the flower cross section. This is the floral structure inside. The male and female. Okay? So this thing is the... Where is this? If you look at the flower, you can hold the flower in your hand, okay? If you want to, to take it. These are the yellow things that you see on the floral tube. Okay? At the end, you can see one, two, three, five. These are the stamens. Okay? So these yellow things are the pollens. Pollens. Sorry, these are not stamens. These are the stigma. So the pollens, they, they produce pollens, of course. And then the pollen is going to land on the stigma. Okay? And this is the stigma. Okay? So you can see that depending on the species, some structure they kind of fused together okay and this is depending on the species some species they do not have any fused parts they have each part in each layer very easy for uh, you to identify some species however they have um, fused layer 
it will complicate things, but that's how nature um, has given you. All right. Okay. So draw it and then I know you can imitate this drawing, but please open it so that you can have a look yourself. So how do you remove it? So there is a green skirt here. This is called epicalyx. So my advice is for you to remove this epicalyx first. Of course, you need to um, draw it first. Remove the epicalyx slowly. And then pinch it out. Then you will get your ovary here. I don't know whether you can see or not. Can you see? I, I have removed a layer of the style. Can you see it over it? Yeah. All right. So if you want to be a bit more proactive, and you know, oh, I got internet to teach me. Why didn't I use that? Fine. Use the internet. But you need to know what to look for. Right. So you, you can go to your beloved internet. The things that you need to look for is, let's say, oh, the internet in, in this faculty is not that great. It's connected. It's connected. Uh, I don't think it's happening. Can you turn on that thing? You know, information now literally at the at your fingertips. Okay. So oops. Why is it not connecting properly? This one. Okay. one moment, one moment. Have you turned on the oh yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Why is it not? You know, our country, our politician, they should really address the connectivity issues. Yes. It's just not happening. Hmm. Why is that? I'll try to connect this. Let's try again. Nope. Anyway, uh, I'll give you something anyway. Um, let me try. Uh, DG, so come to the data there. Sorry, I'll, I'll use my phone and I'll give to the group. Um, Okay, okay, it's getting there.
All right. Okay. This is something to help you with the labeling or you want to appreciate the structure further. Oh, this internet is really something. So coming. How's internet at your faculty? Is it pretty much like here or is it better? Or you don't use internet? You use messenger pigeon? I'll try to connect with this again. Um, it's just not happening. Mana tak ada. Oh. Okay. Let's try again. No. <sighs> okay. I'm sorry about that. Tak apa. Um, this remind this will teach me a small lesson to uh, download things ahead of time. Yeah, things happen, you know, when technology fails you, right? Okay, uh, but you still can access using your phone, right? Yeah, um, I'll give you one example, I'll send it to the group. Okay, um, let's see which one I think looks okay. Yeah, this, this picture. Um, how do I share it? So pretty much we're doing thing hybrid now. Got it, got it, got it. Oops. I hope it's loading. Why is it not loading? Some reason it's not loading. Why? One minute, bad, bad internet. You know, it's been like this for like five, six years now. Still not changing. Um, maybe I need to change mine to what? Let me let me, let me stop this one. No, it's not, it's not. Hang on. Just bad. It, it's kind of pointless because no, no matter how much I complain, not, not, nothing has been done. It's pretty much like this. So don't feel too bad because even the student before you, still this is the issue. Internet issue. What? Oh, okay. But it's not coming here. Anyway, I'll just uh, use my phone. 
Okay, so this is one example that um, I get while searching for it. So it is not an evil thing to use internet to search for information, okay? Please know what words, keywords, terminologies to use. Just now, what was the terminologies I was looking for? Hibiscus, flower, morphology, okay? And your goal now is, after you have drawn your plants beautifully, you want to include the labels now. And how do you label it? So um, this is one example that I look at. P please be aware of something. Um, not all information can be trusted. So double check to see the source of the thing that you want to quote from. Okay, like this one, this is from, well, it's from the sec secondary school thing. So you school something that you can trust. Okay, and let me check, is that correct? So you got your stem, this guy here, that's my friend. So you got your stem, receptacle, so this thing, receptacle. So receptacle, don't worry, okay? All of this you're going to learn in each week when we are dealing with specific organs. So receptacle is um, just the flower platform. Flower platform, okay? Um, there, there is, um, there is a, a conundrum in Malay. Buah apa biji di luar? What? What? Okay, how does it look like? Huh? So that, that right? Guess what? This is true. Why the conundrum sounds buah apa biji di luar? This is fruit. If this is fruit, then what's this? This is actually swollen receptacle. This thing for the cashew. In case you do not know, this is cashew, okay? Some people are so clueless. I do not know, I cannot imagine. Ugly drawing, ugly drawing. I need Google image. <laughs> Sorry, Google image, internet not working. So actually, the conundrum in Malay, even though that conundrum has been around for like 100 years, the people in the past, they know this is the fruit. This is not the fruit, okay? Because this is actually the platform of the flower. This guy here. You see it this way. Turn it upside down. It's going to look like this. Okay. Where is all the petals and so on? Well, that has fallen down because fert fertilization has occurred. The fruit is developing. So all the floral parts are not needed. Okay. So that's why they are not present in the final fruit. Have you seen hibiscus flower? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Maybe you want to Google? All right, okay, so let's go uh, further. So you will have, I'm going to zoom in here, okay? So you're going to look something like here. So. So you're going to have your over here. So this is so this is your ovary. Okay? And outside here you have a structure. The green structure is called the sepal. It's green. So the terminologies you need to understand now, there are a few. You are familiar with petal. Kelopak bunga. This is petal. Petal usually color. Colored. You got color. Sep sepal usually it's either green or not color. White. Sepal. Okay. Petal is to attract pollinators. Sepal is to protect petals inside of it. So these things are actually in layers, okay? I wonder you still have not taken the flowers to play around with your hands. 
Take it. Take it. Leave on. That's enough for each of you. Take the flowers. See? Final years. So heavy, so big. Don't want to move. So big. Take it. I just showed you how to expose the ovary, right? So you can do it. Do it. And then find the image to describe it. Open it. Yeah, you can open it. <laughs> right. So if you open it far enough, you're going to see that um, there is a tube here. Inside of here, there is a tube. Outside here, there is also always already a tube. Inside a tube, there is another tube. That tube is actually the inner tube. That is the stigma. Okay? All right? Yeah. Oops. All right. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. So I'll give you time to draw it now. Okay. Take your time to draw it. Draw the whole plant and then draw the flower structure. Just that. After you're done, at the bottom here, you need to put the label. Okay. In this label, this is very standard, okay? In all the herbarium that you will go. You must have the, the Latin name or the botanical name. You must have the vernacular name. Okay. Vernacular name means common name. Pretty much like the scientific name, botanical name, Latin name, they all mean the same. Vernacular name. And then I need to know the provenance of it. Provenance mean proverb C E. Provenance mean the origin of the plant. Where is it from? Is it from Russia? So look it up. Look it up. Okay? And extra info. Extra botany can be sometimes economy. Okay? Alright. So find about this. The Latin name. So for the Latin name, um, we call the Latin name or the botanical name. We use the system called as binomial nomenclature. Why? Because we use two ranks of the taxonomy ranks that you saw earlier for this nomenclature. We use the genus plus the species okay so the genus for this is oh i forgot there's another one actually here um family need to know the family as well so the genus is high beast curse what about the species If you write using computer, it's easy to make this italic. You can't make it italic using your writing, just underline it. Okay, and then write down the uh, vernacular, uh, the family first. What's the family of this? What? How, how do you pronounce this? <clears throat> I tell you one thing. If if you go abroad, you're going to see that people pronounce this differently. Don't be surprised and don't accuse people of being wrong. Okay. If you are dealing with people from the America, they're going to pronounce it Mavase. Mavase. Pretty much the way we pronounce it here. Why? Because the lecturers from this department 
all of them actually graduated from the states, okay, from the past. So that's why the whole faculty pronounced the American way. If you go to the Europe, the Rome, Italy, you know, the very uh, place where this language came from, the UK, the island, um, the France, it's going to pronounce differently. What? Malvesi. Malvesi. It's different, okay? Just bear in mind. So it's pretty much for other plant family. The family of grass, the American to say it, Poise. So the European way of saying it? Poise. Poise. Okay? Right. Just that. Well, I, you cannot report this on your paper. I'm just telling you verbally. So do not accuse of people being wrong if you hear it, you know, differently. Pretty much like you are reciting the Quran. Okay? There are seven ways you can make the pronunciation and it's all accepted. Don't say people, you're going to hell. It sounds different. No. There are things you still have not seen or heard. Okay? So be open. Be open and don't get easily spooked. You know spooked? Senang nak melata. Bila tengok, when you hear somebody say something differently or not according to your taste, you, you, you have the tendency to react abruptly. Chill. Okay? Pretty much, maybe you have not seen or heard everything. Okay? So have all of these and also the ethnobotany and then put uh, ethnobotany. Oh, the provenance, sorry, the provenance. Where is it from? Ah, this is something for you to find out. Okay. Just coming back to here. So hibiscus, oh, sorry, I put the spelling wrong. Hibiscus, okay? Rosa sinensis. Rosa, because it's red. Sinensis is mean Chinese. Go figure why, why, why they name it uh, that way, right? Sometimes, if you go to your textbook, it will have a letter at the end here, something like this. So this is actually the name of the person who described this line. The capital of it, L, usually Linnaeus, okay? The father of taxonomy for the plants, right? Okay, so um, for the ethnobotany, whatever short information that, that you can find about it, just one sentence, okay? Don't go crazy about it. And finally, um, if you don't want to talk about ethnobotany, you can talk about the economy. All right? So do that. Yeah. Uh, so let's try to do it for 20 minutes. Let's see where you got it, okay? In the meantime, you got a question? I'm here. I'm here. Any question? All good? Okay. Sure. List the raw. List the raw. Maybe this we will have a look at other days. Okay. Um, do you know what this is? This is called Herbarium Press. This should be your activity, but I tend not to have this activity. Uh, but I think maybe for you, I need to have. Ha, have you done this before? Also, you have, don't have to learn that. Uh, so, so take a piece, you, you, you press using imagination. Under the bed. Well, it can be under you. You're heavy, right? Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll explain this very quickly. Okay, what this is. It's just getting hotter in here. Why? Um, uh, I think better for me to be right in the middle here. So that uh, people at the back, I only have one of this. Can you can you come a bit closer so that um, you can see? So this thing, this thing here, this is not tofu making thing. This is called herbarium. Okay. Um, the function of this um tool is actually well the name is press press for what 
Why? Why didn't it press it? Botanists, when they go to um, a field to do the collection and so on, the group at the back, can you see? Or do you want to come here? Datanglah sini, kau nampak ke? Boleh tak jangan jari berat pinggang sangat? Ambil kerusi tu, bawa sini. Supaya nampak. Your, your, your chest got wheels. Wheel away. Okay, so this herbarium press, the main purpose is to do, to preserve your plant collection. Okay, for example, some botanists, they go to the jungle, they go to the forest, they collect. It's not possible sometimes to bring the living plants. Okay, it's just not possible. So what they do is, they collect the plants and then they kind of do the plants by staking formation like this. So this thing got this wooden panel like this. It is slated. Why is it slated? So that you can make music. Why is it slated? Air can? To make it pretty? So that you can pass through all the strings if you need to tie it up. When you tie it, um, sometimes this thing is not present, this strap here. Okay. And also to facilitate aeration. All right. So in this press, it's got two, okay? um, two wooden panels. You got um, paper materials of different thickness. You got things like the cardboard here, okay? um, the laminated cardboard here, and also you have a few of this, I'll show you, meaning that for each herbarium press, you can press multiple plants. It's not only for one plant, one press. No, you can have multiple ones. So this has been prepared actually. Okay. So this is a unit of press plant. Oh, water keluar. Water keluar. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so you go to the jungle, you found interesting plant, and then you collect the plant. Look at the plant, it's pretty much like what you are doing today. It has got the important organs. So when you do the collection for the angiosperm, angiosperm <coughs> means that plants that have the proper fruits, the seeds are enclosed and so on, you need to have the flower, okay? So have all of these flatten out on the surface. It has got the leaf. Okay. It has got the flower. Everything intact. Okay. No need to just do the dissection and, and anything like that. Including the flower buds. The flowers that are not blooming just yet. And also the pots. The fruit pots. So we would we can say that this is a good sample of herbarium because all important organs are still intact. But sometimes due to the luck, you've been very unfortunate, you're not able to get all of this. Whatever you can get, put it in here. So layer everything flattened out. Sometimes you can have a small tape, you can tape on it and put a little note, right? Have a paper like this. Cover it. Why you cover it? This paper, old newspaper, um, we call it's hygroscopic. You know hygroscopic? Um, materials that readily attracts moisture. Pretty much like sugar and um, salt. You see sugar in the sugar jar in your kitchen over the time it's going to clump up together because the sugar attracts moisture. Sugar is one example of hygroscopic uh, material. So this thing is hygroscopic as well. So it can facilitate your plants to dry in addition to flatten it out. 
Okay, can you use other material? Well, it's always advisable to use paper because if you use the cardboard right away, you might risk of breaking this leaf because this leaf, when it's fresh, it's very brittle. So newspaper will protect the delicate structure while the drying process is taking place, all right? Anybody know what plant is this? We have this around the campus, this plant actually. It's a tree. Rose. Yeah, mm. rose are the pot. Siapa jangka? What, what plant is this? What? What? Ini chocolate chocolate? Ini luar? I'm not asking dia dekat mana, I'm asking the name of it. What is it? Ah, tunjuk, tunjuk, ah, tunjuk lagi, tunjuk lagi. What? Yelah, apa? What? What plan is it? What plan? Who can, who, 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 can, who, who can give a good guess? Hint, it's a, a bean family. Bean family, kacang lah. Kacang, what? So, the vernacular name, what is the synonym for vernacular name? Common name. The common name for this is Tapa Unta. Look at the leaf. Camel's feet. Bukan Tapa Nabi Ibrahim semua tu, bukan, bukan, bukan. Tak ada, tak ada. Tak ada. Tapa Unta. Don't get confused with, there's another plant, it's called Tapa Kuda. That actually is um, creeping plants by the beach. Yeah. All right, right. Okay. What about the Latin name? What is the synonym for Latin name? Scientific name. Scientific name. Okay. What's the name of this? What? What? Eh, cepatlah jawab. Kau nak balik tak? Ha. Cepat. Bahulu. Bahulu. Bahulunya pupari. Bahulunya blakina. Okay, what about the name of the family? The name of the family? Family. Okay, if I'm from Italy, how do I pronounce it? That's American. That's American. Um, some of your friends found the name Leguminose. Okay, Leguminose is also correct if it was 20 years ago. Some plant family, I think there are five or six plant family, they have new names now. One of them is the bean family. The old name for the bean family is Leguminose. The new name is Fabase. Okay. The old name for the grass family is Gramine. The, the new name is Poase. Okay. There are other fields. Okay. Um, palm, for example. The old name is Palm, Palme. The, the new name is Arikase. Okay. So, how do you pronounce this? family if you are talking to an Italian friend. <coughs> What's the name of this family? Fabase. That's your American friend. Now I'm Italy. I don't want to hear this um, a weird sound. Fabese. A C. Fabese. Fabese. Okay. All right, okay, so later on, you're going to learn about other organs, roots, stems, flowers, fruit, and so on. For each of the organ, you are going to pay attention to individual leaf like this. What is the shape of this? Is it a sing single or in cluster? What is the edge of the leaf? What is the apex of the leaf, the base of the leaf? All of this has names in botany. 
And guess what? They are in Latin. Okay. So prep yourself to embark upon a journey to learn new language. All right. Okay. So this is actually, um, what shape is this? Sure, it looks like heart shape. Um, try, try to um, um, search this word. See, what does it look like? Does it look like heart shape? Do you know any plant that looks like that? This? Sometimes this chordate used to describe the apex. Sometimes it is used to describe the base of the leaf, but the word is still the same. So chordate is actually the word to, to, to show the heart shape. Yeah, if you are too shy to say out loud to your crush that you love him or her, just say, I chordate you. <laughs> that works as well. All right, okay, so you have all of this. Um, covered and then you put the harder cardboard on top of it, sandwich in between. Yeah, and if you have other sets of plant, put a point on top of, of each other and then close the panels. This panel is very fancy because it's got the spread, and then you just tie it up. I'm 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 not I'm not so keen of using this because I tend to break things. Oh, see, I broke I broke things already. So, what happens if you don't do the, do this correctly? You'll get fungus. You get fungus. Okay, so tie it up. Put it under the sun or in an uh, oven, right? There will be, they should be ready if you're not involving any too wet sample like the root. They should be ready about three or four days, okay? And if you take good care of this, your herbarium, they're going to last for many, many decades, okay? Of course, you can put some kind of chemical on it, okay, All right? Um, I will decide later when uh, you will do this activity. I don't think we have enough of this, so you need to DIY this yourself. All right? Or maybe not. Maybe you, you deal with this with Umarani. Right? Okay. I think that's all for today. Yay. Yay. All right. Okay. So please go back home and do your homework and submit to me. Okay? And whatever instruction that comes along on the Skype, please follow the instruction carefully as well. All right. Okay. Uh, by the way, any questions? Any question? Anything to object? Attendance? Uh, we'll, we'll start attendance after third week because the first two weeks, people dropping, people registering. It's not stable. Not to worry. Um, I'm not so keen on taking the attendance anyway. Oh, that's right. All right, I'll see you next week. Okay.